Welcome to the Best Business Podcast, the podcast for established marketers, entrepreneurs, and CEOs, the ones who want to join me in my mission to create 200 new multimillionaires who solve world problems with entrepreneurship. If that's you, then this podcast was created to give you access to the tools, training, strategies, and tactics you need to achieve multiple seven-figure profits as soon as possible. This world needs the best business you can build, so please get ready, open your mind, believe you can do this, and let's build a better world together for future generations. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Daryl Urbanski, your host as always, and today we are joined by a keynote speaker and global trainer who has been running successful companies since age 20. I'm talking about Simka Gluck. And Simka first moved to the startup nation of Israel from New York about a decade ago and has spent the past five years as a co-founder and chief fun officer of Fresh Biz. We're going to get into Fresh Biz in a minute, and I love this type of stuff. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan, and everyone listening is going to benefit a ton from what we're about to cover today, so please stay tuned. With over 10,000 hours of personal and professional development, Simka is also the author of the book, The New Entrepreneurs, Changing the Way You Play Life, published by Wiley's, and was the radio show host of Innovation Nation. Right now, Simka lives his passion for traveling and educating people around the world on how to refresh their lives and businesses through the cutting-edge fresh biz methodology and the power of game-based learning. I had a brief chat with him a couple of weeks ago, and I'm really excited he agreed to do this interview. So, Simka, thanks so much for your time today. How are you doing, my friend? Daryl, very good. It's good to be here, and happy new year, my friend. Yeah, happy new year. So, I love this. We mentioned before, so I've checked out your website, and I kind of poked around a little bit to see what you do, and it's very interactive, game-based. I mean, I've played Cashflow 101, and, you know, 201, or 102, or 201, whatever the series is. Like, I just love, I've played all sorts of different apps on my phone to, to, you know, to get that business simulation, and just from what I can see, I love how that's kind of what you embody, and you bring that playfulness to it, and that interaction, and that fun, creative side, but still with the, you know, challenges and problems and pressuring people to problem solve at the same time and develop those skills. So now we'll get into all that, but how did you even get started? Like, where's your background to this? Do you come from a family of entrepreneurs? What inspired you to even come up with the game? What were you doing before Fresh Biz? How did you even get into this? Okay, sure. So I've really been doing entrepreneurial spirited things since I was a kid, whether it be selling things out of my locker or my dad always encouraged me to come up with different you know, innovative ideas, doing street fairs. I eventually ran my own sales and marketing company when I was in my 20s. And that was before I before I moved from New York to the startup nation of, of Israel. And mm-hmm. along the way, I got introduced to the world of personal development and self-development. And, you know, this was this was so this was so interesting because before that I had done pri- primarily a lot of sales training and a lot of sales techniques and all that marketing world. What industry, what product, what were you guys selling in this, in the, when you were doing this direct sales and the marketing? Yeah, sure. So we basically were the New York City office for the company called Cutco. And we basically had about a few hundred student sales reps that worked for us every single year that were selling a high quality line of housewares and kitchenware and things like that. Mm. And we recruited, trained, managed them. And it was a it was a really amazing experience. It was a really amazing experience. And eventually one of the managers was like, you guys got to do this incredible workshop. It's going to be transformational for you guys. And we started to get into the world of personal development through that. Got and it. that led to me wanting to become a trainer, wanting to become a coach, wanting to really impact the future of business. Right. And it was along that path just to let you know that, you know, we were in Israel. I got into the world of real estate. We built up a whole community. And along the way, I was doing coaching and I was invited to the first ever English speaking workshop for the Fresh Biz game. Mm. Basically, my partner, Ronen Goffney, spent five years creating the Fresh Biz game. It was an idea that he had, he felt that there really are no games out there that really train people to become smarter and better and think faster at all the different multiple dimensional aspects of business. Right. So he spent five years creating this game and he gave it to his friends and family to play. They loved it, but they'd come back to him weeks later saying, hey, this is pretty fascinating, but I started doing things differently in my business that I got as an insight from playing your game <laughs> and it had crazy positive effects and it's mm. unbelievable. And that's when Ronan understood that this is a lot more than just an entertainment game. This has got to be at the center of a game-based training company. And he started creating curriculum and creating workshops. I went to the first ever English-speaking workshop. Daryl, I didn't win the game that night, but I got to <laughs> tell you something. It was, it didn't leave my mind. In other words, everything, like I left, the, I left that night 
and I started viewing aspects of business and life through sort of the game mechanisms that the game introduces to people. And I just, I was so fascinated, I was blown away by it, that I wound up becoming a trainer for FreshBiz. I became one of their, one of their first coaches early on. And I remember getting the phone call at one point from Ronen saying, hey, Sim, I just want to let you know, we're ready to take the company global and I want you to be my co-founder. And I was just, man, I was dancing. I was right. dancing a jig. That's awesome. So, yeah, right. Because you believe in it and you're a product of it. So that was about six years ago that we really got started. Ronen actually, just for all you entrepreneurs out there, Ronen went ahead and he was so passionate about this that he sold his house to print the first thousand games that took our company global. Wow. So, right. <laughs> So you talk about being all in. I mean, this guy walks the talk and really talks the walk. And six years later, we've taken about 50,000 professionals from across 25 countries through our game-based training experiences. Two years ago, we wrote the book, The New Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And here we are. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's awesome. And I love that. So I want to want to back up a little bit because I think one of the powerful things about the game element, and especially like in a workshop setting, is it ever, it's always different every time because the people are different. And I'm, I haven't even played your game, but just knowing how it's set up, the people are always different. The challenges are always going to be different. Every situation is unique. And in psychology, they talk about lenses or gazes. So depending on like, you know, how you are raised in the world or your experiences or even geographically where you live you have a certain lens of the world and i think what i love about this is when it's a game it takes you out of that context and lets you look at it playfully right from a higher level perspective and almost like a simulator like simulate different scenarios right and just an experience like you said like see yourself because in, in life you don't necessarily get exposed to so many different opportunities or you know what i mean like and like you said a lot of yeah. games aren't that dynamic so i love that because it takes people out of their element and it makes them feel comfortable going outside their comfort zones or experimenting because it you know it doesn't matter if you lose right at the same at the end of the day but the lessons you get to keep forever so beautiful that's awesome yeah if I could just add to that, I want to just say that a few things, you know, one, the whole, the whole reason why it's really a game-based training experience is because exactly what you said, simulations are so powerful. I mean, uh -huh. you have simulations in the world of athletics and sport athletes yep. training for the Olympics, doing, uh, playing real sports and also playing simulated sports. And it's the same thing for pilots. And it's the same thing for across the spectrum of many yep. different industries. So giving people sort of a safe place where they can do moves, such as they can negotiate, they can lead, they can communicate, they can experience, you know, what yep. winning looks like or what leverage looks like. It's really powerful. And the game is a good mirror because mm. there's a famous quote which says, how you do anything in life it's is how, how you, do you do everything, everything. in life. Yeah, yep. yes. So right, right. So you can take a snapshot of someone in one area of their life and you can pretty much get how they're going to be in many different other areas. So the game really meets people where they are. And each person, I mean, literally, you know, you can run a, we just ran a training, for example, for HP, we had 100 HP top level executives, and each person left with their own set of insights, their own set of breakthroughs, yeah. their own set of what they specifically need to do to run a smarter and better department going forward. So it's nice that it really gets to meet you where you are in your life and give you that safe space to be able to try new things out. Right, 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 of course. So the product's obviously fantastic. Let's talk about the company, so to speak. And I mean, you've joined them, you've been a part of them. Can you tell us a bit about the company's history and its growth? I mean, has it just been an overnight success? Have there been challenges? I mean, how has the game, being the developers of the game, helped you guys grow your own company, if that makes sense? Like, what have, what have, what have been the obstacles that you've, you've had to overcome? Yeah, so, so we've definitely overcome a bunch of obstacles along the way. And I think that one of the best things for us is essentially we basically play the game of real life and we play the game of running our company the way we play the game itself. In other words, it's really it's a simulation that allowed us to get trained on how to run a really, really smart business. So mm. just to give you an example, I'll share with you some of the, like sort of the highlights and then I'm gonna share with you just some of the real raw moments. Let's <laughs> of, do it. Yeah, let's do it. Obstacles and challenges along the way. <laughs> but but uh, oh goodness gracious. But what I would just say is that definitely being focused at this point now we have about two hundred trainers around the world that are licensed to run fresh biz trainings in their respective countries. For 2017, we're actually focusing on, on just a group of 150 trainers in the US that we're really building and growing right now as we speak. And one of the things as our business model on principle, because we're an entrepreneurial training company, is at this point now, we've been doing this for six years, we have no employees and we have no office space. Mm. So we are a Still lean virtual, company. Right. Yeah, that by design keeps it very lean. 
And yep. all of our partnerships that we have are in the language of FreshBiz, they're all smartnerships. They're really mm. smart partnerships that are based on success and based on value and based on sort of a mutually agreed upon trust, integrity, and mission focus. So mm. we're constantly working on developing new materials and, and, and new offerings so that our partners really have all the motivation and reasons in the whole world why they want to keep doing what they do at an even more elevated level. So it's it's allowed us to really flex the muscles of, you know, really no employees, no office space, keeping it lean, but at the same time bootstrapping along the way right. from one stage to the next. And I think talking about some of the challenges, I mean, if I could just share some, some of the main challenges along the way. Sure. One, one of them for sure was being early. You know, very often, uh. you know, there's this sort of like uh, this sort of fa fantasy, romantic idea. Right. Oh, man, you know. Can you imagine buying Google back before Google? Can you imagine buying Apple in the 70s? Or, you know, pe people, pe people romanticize about these yep. ideas, but being early, it's often really not that sexy. It can be very lonely and it can be very uh, scary. You know, we yep. were talking about entrepreneurship and gamification and game based training six years ago. No one really had any clue what we were even talking about. So it's only the most cutting edge early adapters that brought us in to train their companies, to train their students, to train their entrepreneurs. And, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's- You had to cut your teeth that way. Yeah, what does it say? Yeah, the pioneers get true. the arrows, the settlers get the land, you know? So sometimes being first, <laughs> like, yeah, you gotta take those arrows, you gotta take those lumps and those learning lessons, because there's, you know, I was, I was walking in the woods and I came to a fork in the road and I took the less uh, the path less traveled and that made all the difference. You know, exactly. but it's, it's a rough path. That's the th like, you know, that's where, it's a rough path and it's lonely and you have to have vision. You have to really believe in what you're doing yeah. and you have to hang on. And th thankfully, you know, we hung on, we hung on at this point now, the world is so ripe and ready for entrepreneurial thinking, for multidimensional thinking. Everyone's talking about gamification, game-based training. They want to have yeah. simulation-based learning. They want to develop creativity, innovation inside their culture. So yeah. at this point now, we're so right on mark because we really held on, thank goodness, you know, but challenge number one was being early and really, really being able to keep generating. I mean, you know, when you're a small business, very often people think that, you know, a small business is almost like a big business, but just on a smaller level. Right. And it's Which actually really, really not the case. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really not the case. I mean, it's not like right, a small business has to be more fluid and flexible. It has a lot less resources. It has almost no department. So you have to just juggle and wear many hats and you have right. to really figure out. So we definitely went through that. I'd say another challenge that we went through also was very early on, we had this idea, you know, you mentioned before that you played the game uh, Cash Flow. That's Robert Kiyosaki's game that develops yep. financial education. It's a good game too. So his game came out a few years ago. It works completely different skills. I mean, mm -hmm. it's totally, totally a different totally, world. Totally different. But I would just say that we had the idea basically to sort of to come out with a home version of the game but we were a little too early. And what wound up being the case was that we basically printed, you know, so many games that we thought we were gonna be able to go ahead and to sell and it was coming Oh, the from... sales weren't there. You, you, yeah, you, you converted cash into inventory, but you didn't have the sales volume. So then you end up with a lot of inventory. Exactly, and we had an issue with China being about six months late. So we had so many different orders wow. that we couldn't even fill and, and, and having to wait. And then we wound up basically only being able to sell it to people at homes for a cost that wasn't very exciting for us and for right. the marketers that we had. So it allowed us again to use some entrepreneurial thinking and to pivot. And we wound up basically you know, saying at this point now, we're actually gonna turn it from a home game. We're actually gonna have it get into the realm of serious games. And that's, that's a much higher level run through facilitators and trainers mm -hmm. and things like that. So in the end, I mean, we were able to convert it to now having 200 trainers, literally training some of the best companies all right. across the world through the game. But in that moment, my goodness, c converting cash into inventory and then having to store the inventory Story, and pay for yes. it on a monthly basis. Yeah. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, I'm glad you guys made it. And honestly, it sounds like that's a fantastic solution because it's got it's a higher touch. People have a better quality experience because you have a facility. It's like anything, right? When you have a guide walk you through something, especially the first time you do anything, right? You get a better resilience product and the results speak for themselves so exactly exactly and in in the next 18 months to two years we'll probably roll out the home version of the game once we have really the big fan base that already had the experience of going through at a higher level so just right. wanted to add that 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It won't be as in depth though. It probably have to be simplified. I think it. Definitely. It's, yeah, it's a great. It'll be obviously it'll still be beneficial to play. But I, for anyone listening to the call, I really sincerely encourage you to make the relationships and to try it. Try it out. I mean, if I don't know, I will. You have to check out the site and figure out what locations there are. But I mean, just the networking, the people you meet, getting surrounded by like-minded people, the challenges. Exactly. Yeah, it's just just getting out of your day to day. I think there's just a ton of benefit for that. But definitely get the home version when when it's released as well. So. So when you see guys run these workshops and, and these games and you watch people, do you see like, they're like kind of the most common mistakes you see people making, entrepreneurs making when they play the game or the biggest parts that people trip up over, things people hold mm. on to or struggle with? Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to say that what's interesting about it is watching how different cultures and different people play the game from different countries. Because mm. there's, oh, I mean, yeah. it's really, that's a whole, that, that's a whole different conversation. But what I would just mention specifically, you know, as takeaways for entrepreneurs where people, let's say, find themselves stuck or what, what lessons they learn along the way, a few things, you know, in our book, the new entrepreneurs talk a lot about the idea of in this new shared economy that we're living in, it's all about three words. It's all about access trumps ownership. And what it looks like is, you know, if you're only focused on the resources that you have, you're going to play a very small game and you're probably going to lose because, you know, when we play a very selfish game, we only look at our own little resources. We can get very, mm-hmm. we can get very, very negative about it. It's very daunting, yep. these big tasks. Yep. In the world of access Trump's ownership, you know, where you can tap into anybody's resources as long as you offer value and have good communication skills, yep. then you realize that there's an infinite amount uh, yes. of possible resources that you have to be able to leverage to win the game. Right. And and that's that that's so key. I mean, just 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 a few examples that we all know in the new shared economy. You know, the idea of, for example, Uber access trumps ownership. You know, what I'm saying yeah. access to yeah. his car trumps have to own it. Yeah. Airbnb. You know, I'd much rather get a space that's gorgeous and beautiful without having to put down X percentage and be locked into a mortgage for 30 years. That's now, it right. doesn't always make sense like that, but a lot of the new entrepreneurs that are out there right now would much rather be a part of, let's say, a shared workspace, which they can access upon demand, yep. than having to be locked into a full-term lease that they're that they're renting and they have employees. The same thing you could print on demand. You know, So yep. access Trump, Trump's ownership is a really big one. And we really give that message across in the workshops that we run because people really understand. They get a more expansive perspective on right. what they have at their fingertips that they didn't see before. Well, it's so almost like that whole the whole six degrees of separation. Like everybody knows everybody within you know six people. According to Facebook, I think it's 2.3 people or 3.2. Wow. It's like a lot. Like at least according to Facebook stats, everyone's a lot more closer connected than six degrees of separation. It's like 2.3, 3.2. But those, mm-hmm. like, I love it because if you just limited your own resources, <clears throat> you. Just, I, I, I mean, the message speaks for itself. If you're just limited to yourself, if you can't think creatively about how to partner with people or share resources, you, you're accessing 5% of what you're capable of because you don't necessarily need, like even staff, shared staff, shared office space, shared resources, printers, shared marketing efforts, shared product creation and collaboration. I mean, you know, that's a fantastic idea because there's a lot of people like, oh, but I'm not an expert in anything. I can't have a business or I don't know how to make it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to make sure. something. That whole idea of I'm not an expert really no longer flies because 50 years ago, if you were not an expert and you weren't in the proximity of an expert, there's no way that you could tap into learn what you needed to learn. But nowadays, we literally have experts upon demand. You know, I can watch any YouTube video. I can watch any TED Talk. I can go through Coursera or Udemy or Khan Academy to learn really whatever I need Mm -hmm. as I need it to be the expert or at least I can get referred to one online and essentially tap into and basically hack their knowledge. So, I mean, yep. that's not even an excuse anymore. And yep. I would just add another, you know, another thing that we see all the time happen also is that people in the game get very stuck because they feel like they don't have enough money to cross over to the next section. Mm. And people will literally say things like, oh my God, Daryl, this is the story of my life. Literally, I just don't have enough money to get to the next level. I mean, this is literally what happens. And we watch <laughs> people, <laughs> and we watch people get stuck and make make fear-based decisions because they think that they're out of money. Mm. And one of my favorite quotes that my partner Ronen says, and I think it's just so applicable, he says, you're never out of money. You're only out of creativity. Right. And it's just so, you're never short on money. You're only short on creativity when you realize that you have so many different dimensions of currencies that you can leverage from your skills, your talents, your gifts, your assets, your properties. There's so many different things above and beyond just this one dimensional currency called cash money yep. 
then really you're never stuck. You can always go ahead. You can always put something together. It just takes some creativity and it takes asking the right people the right questions yep. to be able to get out there and do it. I fully agree. What was the quote again? Can you say it one more time? You're never... You're never sh short on money. You're only short on creativity. Yeah, I love that because here's something people have to realize. So first of all, everything that we have. So there's a couple of things that you talked about I really want to hit off on. So I love what you're saying because before the internet, the only access to information people had was their own formal training education or that of the people around them. Otherwise, they had to go to a library, which was like the central hub of all the knowledge of humanity. But now with the internet, you can just connect to people. You can download uh, from our brains. Right here, people are plugged into this conversation, right? And it even it even it's it's it sits in time. I mean, it time travels travels this interview happened or already happened when people you know what i mean like it already happened when people listen to this mm -hmm. but it's still there to provide the value for them and all this stuff has been created simply from seeds soil the seasons rain sunshine and the miracle of life and that's it like that's really at the end of the day that's all you have you've got seed soil seasons rain sunshine and the miracle of life and when you put those things together and you're creative and you go out there and you're willing to build and experiment and explore and collaborate you know it's like uh, one of the beautiful things is I didn't have to figure out the technology on how to make a video, a VoIP call to someone on the other side of the planet, right? I didn't have to mm -hmm. figure out how to convert the audio to a file. Like, I, I, my life exists on the surface, almost like a boat on top of the ocean of everything every other human has created. Like, when I go drive somewhere, I don't have to make the roadway before I go. Somebody else did it. So that's where, like, when you talk about when people go outside, access, was access Trump's ownership? Right? Yeah, like, I, big don't, time. I, I don't own the road. I didn't build it, but man, I didn't have to figure, you know, I, I really love those paved roads. Same with my car. I didn't have to figure <laughs> out how a combustion engine works and how to put one together. I just get in, push a button and I drive like, you know how amazing that is. That's so, awesome. yeah, I fully agree with that. So that's awesome. So I guess one of the things I want to ask is what habits do you guys feel have helped you on your path to success? Mm, a few habits. One is we're definitely into the world of health and wellness. So we really try, you know, we do a bunch of traveling and training in many different countries and that type of stuff can typically wear someone down, cha changing time zones and sleep patterns and airplanes. Mm -hmm. So definitely eating healthy food, making sure that we take the necessary rest that we need when we need it. For us, when, you know, there's a lot of output of energy mm -hmm. when, we, when, we, when we run a training. So we always give ourselves built right. into... You know, if we need to go to, like, we went to Costa Rica, for example, we presented at the Conscious Capitalism Conference there, along with Raj Sasoda that wrote the book Conscious Capitalism, and then we trained Ernst & Young and Accenture. And even though we had, let's say, about three days of training, we wound up going basically for seven to 10 days. I think it was cl closer to 10 days, just so that we had a lot of breaks, a lot of lifestyle moments, yeah. a lot of rest and relaxation so that we can really charge up. We don't for do the these, event. like, marathons anymore because we're just not, you know, we're not looking to... To, to right. wear a body down and not be the right trainer. So right. definitely resting, health and wellness is definitely important. I would say another key element and has been that we've, we've, we've really just played the game of fresh biz so many times. I mean, literally the fresh biz board game itself that we run at workshops, we've played it so many times that, you know, the last chapter in our book, The New Entrepreneurs, is called You Already Won the Game. And it's, hmm. it's, about, it's about knowing that no matter what someone throws your way, you can win the game, okay? No, okay? No matter what challenge pops up, no matter what happens, no matter what handicap, no matter what, what the outside external circumstances is going to happen, you have what you need to win the game. It's such a powerful insight. You know, I've heard it said like, uh, you know, you, you're going you're to play a much better game, let's say a basketball, when you're playing to win versus playing not to lose. Mm -hmm. So playing the game of freshness has been the perfect simulation for us because no matter what life throws our way, we've been able to be adaptable and flexible and still keep our entrepreneurial spirit even when things, let's say, were a little dark or even when there was a dry season a few years ago or whatever the case. Right. So that actual simulation has really allowed us to really train and develop our brains to really just know that no matter what comes along, we could win the game. I love that. And you know what's funny is that even just in what you just described, it just shows the or kind of organic growth in nature of what you've done. Because, well, first of all, you recognize that business is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So like you said, you don't do these big marathon events anymore because it's really draining for you and your team. And it's almost like you recognize kind of the rule of 10,000, which I think is great for any listeners here. If you're thinking about your product or service, how would you facilitate it for 10,000 people? How would you run 10,000 events? How would you take in 10,000 leads, right? How would you manage 10,000 orders? How would you handle 10,000 
refunds. And that really helps develop kind of a global or systems-based thinking in your business, which you're going to need if you're going to expand, right? Like you are across mm-hmm. multiple countries because you can't like do that. it thinking like mom and pop. You got to have that rule of 10,000 because then you start thinking in scale. If I'm going to bake 10 pies, I need a different set of equipment if I'm, than if I'm going to be baking 100 pies. So mm-hmm. it's the whole kind of begin with the end in mind part. And I love that because it's like you guys just naturally came up against that, right? And that was the solution that came out of the game. And again, just the experience, the hands-on experience, move your bodies, engage with people, have conversations. I think it's just a fantastic yes. concept. Like it's just, yes. yeah, big fan of that whole idea, whole concept. So now where do you see the future trends of this industry going? Mm. The future trends of the industry. Well, I'm not sure if we're talking about, let's say that the training industry, but if we're talking about specifically the, the training industry, I would say like this, everybody, really everybody, and I mean this, you can't read an article on LinkedIn or in Fast Company or Entrepreneur Magazine without seeing that everyone's talking about a few main topics. One of them is employee engagement. And in reality, the lack thereof, it's almost about 80% of employees are not engaged, which mirrors the fact that 80% of managers are not engaged. And it just means that people are literally, they're just, they're bored. They're bored at their office. They're bored at their job. They're bored at the work that they do. And you can imagine it's something like in the hundreds of billions of dollars that this costs the world of business by having 80% of their people not engaged. So that's number one. Right. The second thing is millennials and really being able to talk to them and to train them and to set the right expectations and allow them to just really shine as opposed to put them in a box by training them on what's been going on for the past 20 years. So the training industry itself is evolving. The world of coaching and the world of executive coaching and training is really evolving. You know, the tried and true methods of your typical sort of sales and, you know, sales training or the leadership development training, it's all good stuff. I mean, literally helping someone to feel inspired and motivated is really, really important and really good. At the same time, the world of training is now moving to a place where it's, it's got to be even more engaging because you think about all the items that we have in our life from virtual reality to the internet to social to wearable technology, right. the typical training of just a frontal learning type of thing, a presenter or a panel, that just it just doesn't do it anymore for people. No, it doesn't hold their huge, attention. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's like they've done studies with podcasts. Two-way conversations like this hold people's attention better than a one. Like if it was just me just talking and going on, this wouldn't hold anyone's attention versus mm-hmm. the engagement. The back end, it's got to be stimulating, dynamic, dynamicism. I think that's a huge part of it. So. Exactly. So that's definitely where the training industry is going. It's going to a place where it's got to be more experience-based. It's got to be more exciting for, for, for millennials. And it's got to reach people in a way that allows them to unlock employee engagement to really get people to caring you know when people don't when people are not valued or they don't understand what the culture is about or they don't understand why they need to care or they're stuck in some silo somewhere okay then what happens is they don't they don't feel the breath and the win of the culture they're just sort of stuck yep. so it's really you know it's important to really address those those two i think those are really the two main issues i'd say the millennials flooding into the workforce and employee engagement to really get people thinking more creatively more innovative and more passionately so that we can really unlock our employees and do great great work as a company i love that i love that a lot so now one thing i want to ask you about is kind of about you guys and your growth strategy your marketing strategy and plans so how have you decided to grow the business? Your strategy, you've got a book. So was that a big part in your marketing, like in launching this business? How did you, how are you planning on like getting, what's your strategy? Like how do you get leads? Is it strictly through training trainers to become like mini franchisees of the business? Is that kind of it? Like get the book into people's hands, try to get the readers to become interested in becoming like a facilitator and then have the facilitators do some sort of on the ground kind of face-to-face kneecap to kneecap marketing with whatever their local business district is to get up, you know, mm. to get, get some workshops running. Like, is that kind of the angle you guys are taking or how have you been, I mean, say you're going to attack the United States, kind of what's the plan? Sure. So I'd say a few different methods so far. You know, Ronen was born and raised in Tel Aviv in Israel. And again, we were, you know, we, we've been here in Israel for six years. So we have, I mean, we're a really, really big brand here in the startup nation. Mm. And I think that what's happened for us is organically, I mean, you can't take 24 or 100 managers through really a game-changing experience, pun intended, and not have it show up, you know, in some form for HR executives, you know, across the planet. So mm-hmm. there's been a lot of organic growth that's happened just through referrals. 
of people hearing about what we do, about what we offer, go on our website and contacting us to go you know, run something for their conference or their retreat or their company. So it's been really a lot of referrals just by running the game-based workshops itself. And then what happened to us along the way about three years ago that we got an email from Wiley's asking us to write this book. I mean, this was oh. something that they literally, we, 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 yeah, they were, sure we were stoked. So we said, we're going to go write a book and we're not going to have any marketing inside the book. We're going to de just deliver a pure, authentic message. Whoever gets it and likes it, amazing and wants to do more, cool. If not, that's also okay. We only want to talk to people that really want to be in a conversation with us. Right. And that's definitely allowed us to do, I mean, a tremendous amount of growth also just through the book. I mean, at this point now we have 100% five-star reviews and we're at close to 100 on Amazon for the book, The New Entrepreneur. So it's, it's, resonating, it's resonating with people, which is really nice. And then about two years ago, there's a team building company called Catalyst, Catalyst Team Building. They, they have about 60 partners all across the world running team building for specific countries. And the Catalyst Network, uh, we got connected to them. They saw what we were doing with FreshBiz and they said to us, oh my gosh, you guys got to fly out to our conference in Thailand. Well, we heard fly out to the conference in Thailand and it was just like, yes. I don't right. care what happens, <laughs> we're going to go to Thailand for sure, and if things wind up happening, then that's going to be cool too. Well, we wound up basically getting our first 12 or 13 global partners, well, I don't want to say our first, but our first through Catalyst. So at this point now, we have partners in close to about 25 different countries running fresh biz trainings. About half of them came through the Catalyst team building network, and the other half came just from, just from referrals of just doing what we're doing in the world. Specifically, you know, you asked a marketing question going forward for the U.S., and that's really our focus for 2017. We've been global, and now we're really doing great stuff in the U.S. So we just ran a couple weeks ago a workshop for about 50 executives from TD Bank in New York, and we're doing some really oh, – wow. we're doing some good stuff there. And at this point now, we're looking for the right executive coaches and consultants and trainers who can basically put fresh biz game into their toolbox and use it as a whole new experience that they could bring to their clients and their customers. And I guess just to talk a little bit more marketing, if you ask, you know, specifically for them, how we're doing that is we're doing some really good work on Facebook and on LinkedIn. We created what I think is a really good webinar that gives a lot of value. It really explains about the future of the coaching industry and the training industry. And then, of course, at the same time, we also explain a little bit about our background and why we feel that it's a good solution, basically, for coaches or trainers that are looking to really distinguish themselves. Mm. But that's really, that's really our focus right now for 2017 is just the right trainers on board to be able to deliver quality workshops to quality companies at this point in North America. That's awesome. That's super awesome. Yeah, and just for the record, I mean, obviously I've been endorsing you the whole way through, but – I mean, I, I can't speak about in the future, but at present, Thanks. I get nothing. I get nothing out of endorsing this. So for the <laughs> listeners, this is purely just because I'm a I'm a big believer in this experiential simulation stuff. I just think it's a great idea, great concept, and it's, it'd be a great tool. Like no matter whatever you teach, just to have something. I mean, especially when you're a trainer and you go. I mean, for most people listening to this, if you're in a consulting or coaching component of your business in any way, shape, or form, you know, was it prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. Nice. So anytime you work with a client, you got to diagnose what's the issue. And you don't even know. It's like it's like a trade. Like It's like if you're a carpenter. When you go to renovate a house, you don't know what you're going to find when you crack open the wall. Do you know what I mean? Like there could be mold. There mm -hmm. could be rats living in there. And so there's all sorts of different tools that I think are really beneficial and would be really helpful. So I'm just a huge fan of this sort of stuff. I'm, it doesn't surprise me you've got all this organic growth just because the hands-on nature of it. And it's just it's just a – yeah – it's a big win for people. So now you mentioned people could text. What's the whole texting thing? Is this international? What's the info? Give me the info. Oh, sure. So we put something together. So anybody living inside the U.S. can send a text message to 44144, and they just have to type in the code book. And when you do so, we'll basically go ahead and we'll send you the first four chapters of our book, The New Entrepreneurs. Each chapter is whole and complete by itself. So there's lessons, there's insights already just in the first four chapters that are really a home run for anybody. And of course, it's on Amazon, Kindle, and, and Audible. But um, So definitely to be able to text 44144 with book, and then we'll go ahead and send you the first four chapters of our book. That's 44144, and all they're texting is just the word book. It doesn't matter if it's capital or lower letters. Just text That's it, it. there. Yeah. Now, uh, does it work for, like, in Canada, we still use one as our area code. Would it? I guess maybe I have to test and see if it would work. But definitely in the U.S., try that out. Exactly. Definitely in the U.S. 
And I want to just mention that one of the things we put together for the new year for you, specifically for your show, is that for anybody that runs a company or an organization or a conference that is looking for something like a fresh biz training experience, whether it's a half day, full day, two day, whatever the case. So all you need to do when, you know, is when you go to our website, freshbizgame.com, just basically put in the contact form, the best business podcast, and mm. we'll automatically give you a 15% off for 2017 and beyond just basically for putting that in. Right. Just for letting them know that that's where you came from is best business podcast. Great idea. So yeah, so that's if you, and you guys are doing these workshops all over. How does it work? I guess if someone wants, like they love this, but they're like, I don't think there's anyone in my area. I'm not in the USA. Are you open? People can fly and get trained and then kind of become the area specialist for wherever they are. If you're not there already, is that an option? Yeah, it's definitely a possibility for the right trainers, for the right coaches and educators. We have, I guess I would make a distinction between two different types of things. So on the one hand, we have companies that bring us in to go run training for them, right? So we take their executives through through a workshop and obviously, you know, anywhere from about 20 people and way more than that. We just did a workshop for 300 uh, business students from, from uh, Uruguay. So as long as we have the right number of facilitators, we can facilitate an experience as big as it needs. But the second is exactly what you were talking about. If there's like a local group of entrepreneurs or small business owners and they go, well, you know, my whole company, I have three people. <laughs> so, right. so it doesn't mean, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hire to come in. So we, so we have uh, entrepreneurial small business owner showcases that we do in different states across the country. So it's just, it's pretty much an email away from finding out where, where basically a local fresh biz experience is taking place. I know that we just had a few in the Los Angeles area that, that we ran at WeWork. We had a couple in New York and New Jersey, but yeah, it's a conversation away. Yeah, no, that's, and that's a great way. If anyone, again, if anyone's looking to crack into the business, honestly, even if there's just nothing like this in your local area and you, you know, you're a member of the chamber of commerce, I mean, you could probably just make a good living just learning this and have the skill. I mean, I'm not trying to pitch anyone a money making opportunity, but just to serve a local community like chamber of commerce, I mean, and just, you could, and if you go deep with your clients, I mean, there's a ton of potential. So this Definitely. is fantastic. So what's the website? What's the URL? Where's everyone going? Yes. Yeah. Our website is freshbizgame.com, freshbizgame.com. And personally, Simchagluck, I'm very active on LinkedIn and very active on Facebook. So those are two really good social platforms to be able to reach out to me on as well. And that's S-I-M-C-H-A? Exactly, and G-L-U-C-K. Gluck. G-L-U-C-K, yeah, Gluck. Yeah. So Simka Gluck, look him up on social media. You can go to the website URL. It is www.freshbizgame.com. If you f- fill up, or sign up to have some of their trainers come in, do a workshop, be sure to mention that you heard about them from the Best Business Podcast. If you're just interested in becoming a facilitator, seeing if you have what it takes to join the team, I think you can find that on the website as well. And then if there you want to get the first four chapters of the book for free, the number, correct me if I get this wrong, but it was 44144 is what they text, and they yes. just text the word book. And then after you do that, it'll probably prompt you like a link. Is it send back a link? It might send back a link or might ask you for an email or something to send it to, but that's just something that you can do. Exactly. It's free, yeah. And it's safer than emailing if you're driving. So. <laughs> Yeah, Simka, I really appreciate this. Is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? I feel like we covered a lot in a short period of time, but I just like I think at this point for a lot of people, it's if they if they listen to this and it resonated and vibrate, you know, like take the action. You don't usually in life you don't regret what you do, you regret what you don't do. So if this resonated with anybody, I think at this point, just get involved. I would just end with one more thing, really just a message for, you know, wherever you are in life, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working in corporate, just want to say, you know, again, we said this before, but you already won the game. Just show up to whatever you in life knowing that you've already won the game because you have access to literally whatever you need as long as you ask the right questions, as long mm. as you choose to let to let go of the old fear-based approach to business where it's, it's a competitive doggy dog, all this old stuff that's no yeah, longer not, relevant yeah. in the new shared economy that I just, I just want to let all your listeners know, you know, you have what it takes to win the game. Even if you don't have it, you have access to it. So just yeah. approach life and its scenarios with that attitude and man, you're going to have a lot of wins. I promise. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're listening to this using technology that you don't even understand. You didn't have to figure out, create, build, manage, and improve or optimize, right? So if you can figure out how to apply that same knowledge to your business endeavors, the sky's the limit. So yeah, Simka, thank you so much. Value of the conversation. Always an honor and a pleasure to speak with you and sharing with everyone here and just giving your best and help making this world a better place. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. You've reached the end of our interview. 
Now, first, let me thank you for listening. I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know. And now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success. So please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. You're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself. And remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you.